Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. To send me in peace out to the rest of you. Black heart sign of black in asking you to hit that share button uh, because like and subscribe benefit me, but the share button benefits us. And the message is more important than the messenger. You saw the title. This one's probably not going to be very popular with us, but we have to tell the truth. And uh, Malcolm X said that he was for truth no matter who tells it. And in general, I'm also the same way. However, sometimes we have to take into account somebody's reason for telling the truth. And as I stated in previous ones, people can say the right thing for the wrong reasons and they can make true statements for false reasons. One example is a way that a lot of whites try to deal with racism. Oh, there's uh, race is a social construct. Well, yeah, to a certain extent it is. Now, there is human diversity, but we've interpreted it a certain way. However, uh, sometimes a white liberal may tell you that because they don't want you to confront the issue, but they still have certain biases they're not going to let go. Um, I see this a lot in the Arabian Gulf where I live and work. When I confront people on some of their biases and they start saying, oh, uh, we're all slaves of God. Because, you know, they call black people slaves here. When you call them on it, their response is, we're all slaves of God. Okay, well, yeah, technically that's true in um, the Abrahamic faiths. But that's not why they're saying that. They're saying that because they don't want you to confront them for using the word slave in a racist manner. They'll say, well, we don't uh, say this with any hatred. Yeah, they don't say it with any hatred. They don't actually, most of them don't have a concept of hating black people. But they still make a true statement for a false reason. They don't want you to tell them that what they said was wrong and racist. See, that's what it comes down to. So a true statement is often made for a false reason. This is why it is that although I don't let Saeed Ragia tell us how to police our reaction or how to react to what the hell he said, that doesn't mean that we don't need advice on how we react to these things. It's just that we don't need it from that nigga because even if he told the truth, he would say it for a wrong reason. So I'd say to you, what's going on here is this. We uh, are supposed to react, but we're supposed to start reacting in a measured manner. The way that we should be reacting should be thought out. And many of us do put thought into it. Many of us put not enough thought into it. However, and I'm not saying we should soften the reaction. That's not it. I'm saying that we should make it laser-like. We should make it very precise. And we should make it uh, in reaction to what actually happened. You see, a lot of you listening, um, you're functionally illiterate. I'm not saying a lot of you subscribers, although some subscribers don't write very well and I can tell that you uh, got uh, literacy issues, but doesn't mean I don't like you. I'm just saying some, a lot of you got literacy issues. But many of you have this, um, this illiteracy that it's not just uh, in how you write. It's also in how you understand information. Many of you have issues with just getting your facts straight before you start talking in person or before you start writing on the keyboard. You got to be laser like focused and you got to have your stuff together when you're going to do that. Many of you don't. Many of you, as an example, you said, did you see how they reacted in the audience? They were laughing. They were nodding their heads in agreement. I saw it. No, they weren't. Where did you get this from, you ignorant, illiterate ass jigaboos? I wouldn't call you this if that wasn't the problem. I saw it. The camera panned to the audience. They looked at each other, yes, but they didn't make comments and start laughing. They certainly wouldn't make comments because this was a Friday sermon. In Arabic, it would be called a chutbah. They would not sit there and talk to each other during a Friday chutbah because that invalidates the prayer. This is not something that they would want to do. This is something they would avoid doing. So they looked at each other. But why did they look at each other? Well, when you look at each other, that means that everybody knows something. 
And I'm gonna tell you what they knew that you may not know. And I don't blame you if you just never knew. But now I'm gonna tell you because this is the kind of information we need to have before we start reacting. They knew that this was sensitive what he was talking about and he wasn't on his, uh, he was not on his P's and Q's that day. They knew this. How do I know they knew this? Well, I talked and I work with people from Somalia. Now my wife is from the Horn, but I don't really specify exactly which nation. Somali is one of the languages she can speak. She speaks more than that. But I don't go around specifying exactly which nation in the Horn she's from. I tell you, it's a Horn nation. It is East Africa. Uh, but you know, I'm not going to go a lot further than that because I got to protect her privacy. She doesn't even know about this channel. She don't know the name Blackheart. Now, she knows another nickname of mine that includes Black, but she don't know uh, the name Blackheart. She don't know about this YouTube channel. She even asked uh, the other day, how come you don't add me on Facebook? And I straight told her, because I say some ignorant, foul stuff. I add you there, you're going to be investigated. That's real. So, to make a long story short, many of you don't know that their community is divided in how they're going to relate to African Americans. That's what a lot of you didn't realize. Don't think that the Somali community is some uh, unanimous um, decision against us because we're slaves to them. Don't think that that's the case. That's not the case. Somalis are about as different as we are. We got ignorant, illiterate niggas, like some of you that reacted. We got very astute and very literate Negroes or African Americans uh, who get their stuff together and then they come at you with a laser like precision and focus. We got everything in between. We got those of us who are uh, very happy to be of African origin and they are glad to connect with people of other uh, nationalities but African origin. If those folks are glad to connect with them, we have people that can't, can't stand them Africans over there and don't even know that person might actually be from Barbados or Jamaica and not the motherland. But we can't stand them Africans over there. We got all kinds where well, you got uh, Somalis that don't like Bantu Somalis. Now, Bantus are the ones that are genetically more similar to us. They got the same noses and lips we have on average. But they speak the Somali language. And a lot of other Somalis who are, we would call Hamite, the look that we associate with uh, Somalis is a Hamitic look. And uh, it's not the same as Semitic. But you see, we have a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of Somalis that don't agree with the way that others have treated the Bandu historically and don't want to be a part of that stuff no more. We have that. So the, the population itself is divided. So they know this is a sensitive topic, how they're going to relate to other black people. A lot of the young ones say, look, we're going to take them as they come. The ones that are glad to be with us, we're going to be with them. We ain't got no issues. And you got others that say, you know what, we don't like nobody except maybe white folks. And some of them don't even like them. Some of them will tell you, yeah, we call black people monkey, but we call white folks pigs. What you expect? It's as, it's as diverse a community in its attitudes towards us as our community is in our attitudes towards other black folks and even white folks. But you ignorant, illiterate, country ass niggas that can't even spell and punctuate want to get on keyboards and start talking and a lot of you are Muslims and that makes it even worse now some of you may say well what does illiteracy have to do with it so what if I can't spell dumb nigga that means that you shouldn't be up there on keyboards typing stuff trying to make uh, strong points because you undermine your own your own point when you do it that was why I recorded what I recorded earlier entitled could you niggas please open dictionaries because we make a lot of dumb mistakes ourselves and when other people have learned English as a second language and they don't make these mistakes, you undermine your point in, in their eyes. So they don't even know. They, they're not being snobs. They really don't know that they can afford to listen to you. Because in their mind, education is, or at least public education is free in this country, in many English speaking countries. How the hell did you get this wrong? I'll give an example. Diaspora does not mean all black people outside of uh, the United States, dummy. Diaspora means black people outside of the African continent from which we originate. That's what it means. We come from Africa, even though some of y'all like to say, no, I'm, a, I'm an Indian. No, no, Nick, you, no, you're not. You may be partially, but anyway, Africa is the origin. You may not want to accept it. You may actually think it's not. It's the origin. That's what it is. If it's the origin of the Arabs, then it's definitely the origin of people who still maintain the phenotype. 
Africa's the origin. So that means that outside of it is our diaspora. And it works on a national level as well. See, even on a local level, did you know that there was a New Orleans diaspora? That was after Katrina, when a bunch of people got evacuated. Now you have a New Orleans diaspora at this point. There's been a Creole diaspora uh, for generations. Creoles started on the Gulf Coast, not just New Orleans. They started all along the Gulf Coast because it was all under French rule. Now you've got Creoles that don't live on the Gulf Coast anymore. They don't live in Mobile. They don't live in uh, New Orleans. They don't live in Pascagoula, Mississippi. They live in Los Angeles. They live in Dallas. They live in Ohio. Yeah, y'all didn't know about that. That's a diaspora because where a community starts... And uh, uh, where a community starts is not its diaspora. The place to which it later on moves or spreads is the diaspora. And a lot of you didn't even know that word. You didn't know the meaning of it. Some of you were YouTubers misusing that word. Well, other black folks who know what the word means have the right to look at you and start doubting your credibility. Not because they hate you, but because you niggas got it wrong. And you made yourself seem stupider than you are. Because most of you really ain't stupid, you're just intellectually lazy, which is exactly like these spoiled Gulf Arab students I teach a lot of times. Or rather, should I say I used to teach, because now I'm not getting that anymore. I can tell you, this place is changing. And them dumb, ignorant students, they're, they're getting rarer and rarer. I had to do security for a test today. And, and yeah, believe you me, the dumb ones, they were getting rarer and rarer because they're just not being tolerated as much anymore. Now we need something like that here. Another example of us not having our stuff together before we want to go off and react is when some of us say, well, how could you do something like that? Don't you have a conscious? No, nigga, it's not conscious. Conscious is an adjective meaning aware. Conscience is the noun uh, for the part of the human soul that tells us what right and wrong is and bothers us when we do something wrong and um, compliments us when we do something right. That's the conscience. Conscience. There's an N in there. If you don't think that it's important enough to know the difference between the two when you start writing, nigga, you don't need to start writing reactions to any type of social issues that we're facing. So you can't go after someone like Saeed Ragea. You may want to, but how could you do that? We don't need people like that reacting. You don't have to like it. You can say, yeah, okay, and in my heart I know it's wrong, but you get on the keyboard and you start making statements. No, 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 that, uh, no, nigga. That's why I got to call you nigga, because you can't be doing ignorant stuff like that and then trying to make a statement for other people to lead and follow and say that's right. Can't afford to do that. You might be an example of someone saying the, right, the wrong thing, but for the right reason. Not that you mean any harm, but you just don't think that it's important enough to even know the words you're using. Why is that? Because you had to go through that teenage nigger phase when you were a teenager. We don't need that either. And that's really something that somebody has every right to get on us about. What are black folks doing in America allowing their teenagers to go through a teenage phase? You would say, well, that's, that doesn't make sense, Blackheart. That's the teenagers. No, nigga. Western teenagers tend to believe that they have to be bad because we largely allow this. Now, that's another recording for another day, but the fact remains that we don't have to allow our teenagers to go through a phase in which they think that irresponsibility is cool. You're not, you don't have to allow that in your kids. They think that it's okay to go out and be late, so beat the shit out of them. You were late coming home and it was within your control. I'm beating your ass because of your attitude about morality in general. <laughs> that's why. And they watch an action movie and they start siding with the, the outlaw and the gangster. You ask them, well, what's your reason? Now, if they're on some pro-black, these white folks ain't worth nothing stuff, you can counsel a kid like that. But if they just, oh, yeah, well, you know, he cool, man. He, he, he all right. He a thug. He an OG. You beat the shit out of him. We ain't done that. And any other community has every right to look at us and say, what the hell are you not doing? But then that means they also have to look at certain other communities wherein the thugs are uh, glorified. One is the Italian-American community. Mafiosi, which is the plural for mafioso, mafiosi were glorified to a certain extent. And in the Mexican communities, the cholo was glorified. So they can say that about us as long as they say that about these other communities too. But we got to get our stuff together so that we can have a very laser-like precision and focus when we do react so that we do not exaggerate things that are not true. Or even exaggerate things that are true into an untruth. 
Like when some of you said, oh yeah, they were looking at each other, nodding their heads in agreement. They weren't reacting. Well, they weren't supposed to really react vocally because it was a, it was a Friday sermon. You get on them after the fact. But by the same token, they weren't looking at each other and smiling and laughing and nodding heads and stuff. They were looking at each other. I saw it. They were just looking at each other. There was no noise from the crowd. Now, some of you may not have known the rules of the Friday sermon in Islam. Okay, you just didn't know the rules. That's fine. You can learn them, but it, you didn't know. I'm not holding that against you because no one told you. But what about those of you who knew the rules? And you still wanted some kind of vocal reaction from the crowd. Are you niggas crazy? What about some of you who knew what these rules are and you looked at them and you saw them look at each other but not say anything and then you got to write back, oh, they're looking at each other laughing and grinning, he, he, and a ha-ha. No, they weren't because not all of them agree. And they know that this is one of the issues in their community. That's why they were looking at each other. Like, oh, what you gonna say about this? What you got to say about this? Oh, he hit a nerve, didn't he? Now, if you wanna react, and you have every right to, one, don't use words when you're not sure what they mean. Because that does undermine your credibility. Even if Saeed Ragia would be stupid to use that as an excuse to not believe what you're saying, other people may not be that dumb to do it. They, no, they, they would be right to do it because as far as they know, you're an illiterate ass nigga trying to make a point that they should all follow. That doesn't work. You made a bad first impression with your illiteracy, your functional uh, illiteracy. Secondly, don't start sitting up saying, oh yeah, all them Somalis, this, that, and the other. No, that's not true. That is not the case. Most of them know they would not enjoy what they enjoy if it, if it weren't for us. A lot of Sudanese know this as well. A lot of Nigerians know this. Many of them are beginning to admit this when previously they wouldn't. They were, they're now beginning, a lot, of, especially the younger ones, are beginning to admit, no, we would not have what we have if it weren't for African Americans. Many of them are beginning to admit this. A lot of Jamaicans are beginning to admit they could not have a diaspora community in South Florida if it wasn't for us, because what would have happened to them? In South Florida, they would have been discriminated against very heavily. Many, many non-American black folks are beginning to come around and say no. And I used to hear this even back in 1996 when I started hanging out with Ethiopians. They used to say to me, well, oh, you African-American. Man, y'all built this country. I'm like, I'm, I'm listening to them talk this stuff. I came to realize that most Ethiopians were actually quite revolutionary in their understandings. But what, what, what did we used to say about them? Oh, they light skinned with that pretty hair and them thin noses, so they think they all that. No, some of them did, many of them didn't. Most of the young ones did not. A lot of them young ones are now as old as I am. And they don't believe that. So the one who thinks that way, number one, is not likely to be uh, anywhere in the West in the first place. The ones who think that way are also, at this point, they're in nursing homes if they're not already dead. And we have set up here and overestimated other people's disdain for us because we're overcorrecting for our previous mistake in the 80s and 90s of underestimating other people's disdain for us. We wanted to reach out to other people back in the 80s and 90s, and rightfully so. And that's cool. We didn't know. And we found out, oh, no, they got anti-black attitudes. And, and there were these things. But we overestimated this when we're dealing with other black nationalities because we underestimated it when we were dealing with non-black ethnicities previously. So now we want to turn around and take out uh, on the Africans what we should have given to uh, certain Latinos and the Indians and Pakistanis. What we should be giving to them, we now want to turn around and spit at uh, other African peoples. And yes, I said Africans, and including those in the Caribbean and including even us. Well, you know, they think we ain't nothing. Let me tell you something else. If, I mean, if it's really that bad, I thought New York niggas were no good when I was growing up. Why? Because they called each other God. What up, God? How you gonna sit up here and blaspheme like that? He came out of womb, smelling like Punani, like every, like just like the rest of us. Had to have someone change his diapers and feed him, and you calling him a God. Cops come around, he gonna run. He better run, but you gonna call him a God. That's what I thought. Turns out it's not New York niggas. Five percenters do that. A lot of other people took on that. But, you know, so this division that we want to sit up here and, and overuse as an excuse to cut off everybody else that's black is really something that we could have applied to ourselves first. And we didn't. Some of y'all got to want to sit up here and talk all this stuff about other black people. You not Ados, bruh. 
let some white dude come around and he can talk a little slang, yo, 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 promote parties. Nick can't even DJ, let alone rap. And what's he doing? He's getting into the wombs of black women. How do we know? South Carolina was an example. We not only are functionally literate, we're borderline a community of hypocrites. You want to get at Saeed Ragia? Be my guest. But do it with a laser-like precision and focus when you go after anyone, even if they ain't black. If you want to just be reckless and go against someone and exaggerate and hope that it, it gets some traction, why don't you do that to white folks? When it's somebody white, we start getting all analytical and dissecting what they said and didn't say so that we don't blame them for something they didn't say. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, somebody with some melanin says something, we start exaggerating what they did and didn't do. Start exaggerating how their whole community feels about it. Because you want to kick somebody's ass and you have every right to. Well, th there's a whole world of white folks out there if it's really that bad. You want to go after some other black folk. Not because you consider that to be some form of treachery, but because you consider that to be an easier thing to do. Yeah, you may feel more hurt, more betrayed by it when black folks do it. That makes sense. But, I mean, look. We know that they were also brainwashed, too. But you don't want to go after the one that did the brainwashing and the one that does the most gaslighting. And we know d goddamn well the most gaslighting in the world is done by uh, two parties in two directions. White folks to everybody else and black folks to each other, especially the most conscious of us. Oh, nigga, you crazy. Nigga, you insane. You don't know what you're talking about. When somebody's right and you wrong. Like when I tell you that if you can't spell certain things, you don't need to be up on keyboards trying to react to stuff and trying to make deep and woke points for other people. Now, have you never have you never noticed that the most woke of us are the least literate? Has that ever noticed? I mean, has nobody else noticed this? Just look on Facebook. Have you not noticed that the most woke of us right now in adulthood were the most knucklehead ass niggas back in the teenage years? We don't need them niggas to come around and start trying to write like they woke at this point. They can be woke, but we don't need them niggas trying to make other people woke because they're illiterate. They were too cool for school back during school. So they slept during English class. Them niggas can't write in English right now, and that's their first language. I'm not talking about the one who learns it as a second language and makes mistakes. No, look at the one who speaks English as a first language, but he can't write correctly in it. Now, and not only that, but now that he's woke and posting stuff, a lot of us that used to follow them back then don't want to follow them now when they are right. We screwed up. Saeed Ragia was wrong. But he could have said some slightly different things and he would have been right and I would have had no leg to stand on to react to him and tell him, hey, bro, watch your mouth and get your facts straight. Now, I had to tell him, nigga, get your facts straight. White folks are right along there, too. We're not, you can't single us out for it. You can say that this is happening in the community, but you cannot single us out. But in order to say that to him, I got to be fair. This is us, too. He can't say that to us because he will be trying to deflect. But I got to say the truth. That, and the truth is, that's us, too. That's also us. If we ain't all running around here having kids out of wedlock and shouldn't all be blamed for it like we're the only ones doing it, they ain't the only ones running around here with anti-black attitude issues and, and shouldn't be singled out for it. And they're not. And all of them ain't even got it. We looked at Somalis and Ethiopians and saw, okay, their hair's a little soft and their nose a little thinner. Hey, man, are you black like you? You count yourself as black? Assuming that they wouldn't for some dumbass reason. Did you know that Angela Davis was popular in Somalia back in the 1970s? They knew what was going on with her, but they did not know. We did not know what was happening with them. Were you aware of that? She was popular because they know they are a black nation. And as a Muslim nation, they know right from wrong. Do they always carry it out? No. But they knew it was right from wrong. And they saw her as being on the side of right. So they were behind her. Y'all didn't know about that, though. I don't blame you because no one told you. You don't know what no one ever tells you. But goodness, you still want to make sure that you do not. You want to do some of the research to make sure that you do not just go along with what everybody else is saying because they're saying it. At least try to find if you think, OK, well, they telling the truth. At least try to find out how true it is so that you don't blame the innocent for what the guilty have done. You niggas won't even do that. With your dumb selves. Too cool for school.
You ain't got to do none of that. Because you just so cool. And then before you know it, you done put a whole bunch of posts on different avenues of social media with all kind of misspelled words, no punctuation, some of you niggas writing in all caps, and sometimes even changing the meaning of words to the point that you done undermined your own point. But we supposed to listen to that though. Say what y'all want. I'm not saying this out of hatred, I'm saying this because I love us and I want us to move ahead. I want us to get better. And I don't want us to only get better because somebody from the outside forced us to. I want us to get better because we can, because it's the right thing to do, because we decided to. That's what I'd like to see. And some of you are going to say, well, wait, now, Blackheart, didn't you say that you don't even look black? You're not recognizable as black? Some of you want to use that because you're grasping at any straw you can to undermine what I'm saying because you don't want to hear the message or you don't want the message to be valid. And if you don't want the message to be valid, what that means is that you one of them, you know you slept through English class back during school because you were just too cool for it. And now you're what you suspect maybe you one of them illiterate ass niggas misspelling words and misusing words. You suspect you one of them. If you're trying to take away from what I'm saying right now, you either are one of them or you think you might be one of them and you just don't want to correct Hit dogs holler. If you ain't one of them, then you should be looking and saying, well, you know what? Yeah, this this is a good message. And let me share this with some ignorant ass niggas that might need to know this. That's the difference right there. Get on Saeed Raghia, but do it with a laser like focus. Get on him about what he actually said and what he did not and, and not what he did not say. The other thing, too, is this. When he made an apology, and a lot of you don't even know he made an apology, but when he made one, he still tried to talk about how many people reacted. Um, no, nigga, you need to fuck the shuck up about that. No, Saeed, you can't be sitting here talking about how they reacted. Now, there are some Muslims who know better how to react. But what about the ones that reacted the right way, like Shadid Muhammad? What about him? What about Naeem Abdullah, who wrote to you and said, bro, you made me change my whole khutbah? See, what about those reactions that were right? You need to say something about them, too. And in all honesty, you really should be saying, look... I wasn't prepared for these reactions and even if I wouldn't have reacted the same way I see why you guys reacted like that because look what the hell I said and then look what I didn't say that I should have said if I'm going to say what I actually said you didn't cover that so no Saeed because of your reckless tongue even if you didn't mean any hatred and you meant to promote something that I also promote which is polygyny because of your reckless tongue now black folks Notice, I'm not even just going to say Muslims, but Muslims included, black folks are going to start going at each other based on two nationalities, going at each other's throats. It's already gotten started. We got all kind of nasty things to say about each other. And if my wife was African-American, if she was African-American, I still would be recording the same thing here. The proof is that my stance is the exact same now as it was before I even got married. If my wife had never set foot on African soil and nobody in her family had set foot on it in, in centuries like my own family until I went back, I would still be saying the same thing because this is what I've been saying for years. Black folks cannot afford to be unnecessarily divided. I've been saying this. Those of you who know me in real life have heard me say this before. You see, Indians are divided. Pakistanis are divided. Afghans are divided. Arabs are divided. Arabs from the same nationalities are divided from each other. They're divided for tribal reasons, regional reasons. Now, tribalism is worse in the Gulf nations than it is in other countries, but Arabs are divided. They are not all the same. They're not all united. We just think they're united because we black. So when everybody, anyone, sees all that melanin, then you start seeing some unity in that case because somebody, even before colonialism, before electronic media ever got started, before this mass brainwashing of humanity, somebody was able to move around the world fast enough and brainwash speakers of multiple languages 
to unite against anyone that had more melanin than themselves. Someone was able to do it. And this precedes European colonialism. Only question is, who would have the opportunity the, and the capability and the motive to do it? Now, for me, that's plain in, as day. In Islam, that's the shaitan, even though most Muslims don't know because they don't reflect. But if you think that's too spooky for you, then nigga come up with a better explanation. As spooky as mine might sound, ain't nobody come up with a better one yet. Some of you say, well, I don't want to believe in no devil. Well, okay, fine. Don't believe in one. But somebody inspired uh, a, a bunch of people to go into our homeland and put shackles on us. And somebody even inspired those uh, uh, back home already to collude with some of those who were doing this. Somebody was going around whispering in people's minds to make them more prone to do wrong than to do right. And don't say it's always easy to do wrong. No, it's not. It's easier to stay at home and work a regular job than it is to go out and kidnap a bunch of people, especially for another group of people. So someone has to go around convincing people that it's easier to do wrong when it's really not in order for them to decide that it's easier to do wrong than to do right almost every time. Someone's got to go out and do that, whisper in everybody's ears and can't be seen by other people whispering in someone's ears. That's real. How are you going to explain certain senseless human behaviors like genocide? But that's another talk for another time. The thing is, I've had to record certain things, black folks, even previously, because I was trying to avoid something like this when this came up. Somebody else is going to say something that's a little bit anti-black, and they might be black or they might not be black either way. And we have every right to react and we should, but we need to do it with a laser like focus and have our stuff together so that when we do it, we do not blame anybody for something they didn't do and wind up wasting time on that. Get people dead to rights for what they've done and for what they've said. Sa Saeed Ragia probably does not hate black people. I don't think he hates black people of any nationality. His own, ours, or anyone from the Caribbean. I don't think he actually walks around with a hatred. Nonetheless, he said some foul stuff and he got to be checked for it. But are you going to check him for what he said? Or are you going to turn around and try to check his whole community for some stuff that he didn't say and for some reaction they did not have? Now, which one makes more sense? And don't say, well, you know, this, this old bougie ass nigga uh, who already admitted he doesn't even look like us is just saying this because uh, he's siding with them against us. No, not, not at all. They would not let me side with them against us. They wouldn't tolerate it if I tried to. I can't go to them and say, hey, look, you know what? Give me this much money and I'll say this, that and the other. First, they'd say, why are we giving you any money? And two, why would you sell out your own like that? And most of them ain't looking for no kind of beef with us. Especially the young ones. Even a lot of the ones my own age aren't. They're below that age limit. It's people 10 years older that are looking into this. And honestly, look, if a nation has been torn apart by tribal civil war, and then don't you think that those who left that are sick and tired of it? Because they already have to live far away from home and they can't go back. So you, what you think, most of them are happy about this? No. And there's another thing, too. Let's say one of them actually does have problems with African-Americans because he got robbed at an ATM or he was a cab driver and he got robbed by some old June bug ass nigga from the States. Was you going to be mad at him? If you go to one of their barbershops and they mess your haircut up, you ain't going to be mad at all Somalis. And if both of you, Somali and American, can go to a white barbershop, get your haircut messed up and you would not sit up and say, I ain't never going to no white barber again. Or well, I ain't never getting a cab with a white driver again. You could go, both of you could be at an ATM and get robbed by somebody white and you would never say, I'm not going to an ATM in a white neighborhood ever again. That's hypocrisy and that's something of which we're both guilty. Racial hypocrisy. I could go on, but... Let me suffice it to say that I hope that what I've said one day will not be true. And until that point, I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Assalamu alaikum. Black horse sign and blackout. And if any racist bastards listening to this, black power.